Hey guys, welcome back. So today I'm going to show you something you probably haven't seen a whole lot of just yet. Of course, unless you're Canadian, then you're probably quite familiar with it. It's the new DDI 12 gauge bullpup shotgun. This shotgun is about as close as we as Americans will probably ever get to the QBZ-95 Chinese Military Service bullpup. This is, again, a 12 gauge shotgun. It has been available in Canada now for a little while, but it's just now making its way to the United States thanks to DDI. This, my friends, is probably one of the coolest little 12 gauge bullpups I've ever seen. The quality on the gun seems to be pretty good. We'll talk more about that here in a little bit. It is a polymer external chassis. The molding looks very clean. It fires from a five round detachable box magazine. We'll go over all the features and stuff here shortly uh, about the safety levers and all that stuff, how they work and the charging handles and all that good stuff. I do also wanna show you another new product I've been evaluating, the red dot sight that's on top of here. It's from DI Optical. Now, for an MSRP of $279, this is one of several optics that DI Optical is offering. And uh, putting it on a 12-gauge shotgun is a good way to determine just how durable it is. We'll do some more um, testing with these sights, more destructive testing, where I drop them on the ground and all that good stuff. Uh, but the neat thing about the DI Optical red dot sights, and again, they have reflex sight, tiny pistol sights. Uh, they have 30-millimeter sights like this one. They have a number of them, but many of their sights are used by the South Korean military. It is a South Korean company that manufactures and imports these DI optical red dot sights. So you'll see these sights being talked about more here on the channel as we go, as we go forward and I evaluate them as well. All right, so you know what guys, I have about six magazines for the DDI 12 gauge here. I'm gonna load them up. I've brought out a, a variety of shotgun shells to kind of get an idea of what it works with. Now DDI says you have to use fairly warm loads with it despite the fact it has adjustable gas regulator. They're saying around 1300 or 1350 feet per second for your shotgun loads. So you're talking about slightly heavier loads. You don't have to shoot buckshot, but you're probably gonna wanna shoot BB shot, six shot, things like that, slightly heavier loads. Now this shotgun, I've been playing with just a little bit. I'm calling this a first shots video, but I've actually had it out and was test firing it the other day. Uh, this one seems to be working pretty good with some of the lighter loads, but we'll go through all that here in just a few minutes. So let's load up some magazines head over to the range and see if we can't cut my rubber dummy in half. So the instruction manual on this shotgun does call it the K12 Puma. I don't know what DDI is actually gonna find, finally wind up calling it. They may also wind up calling it the Puma. Now it does have an adjustable gas regulator. Right here on the very end, you have two options. And right now I have it set to its low option, low setting. This is the lowest amount of gas that I'm giving the shotgun. If I push this little lever in and turn it, I can switch it over and open up the gas port and give the gun more gas to work with. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch it over to its lowest setting. There's two dots, a small dot and a big dot that'll let you know how you have your gas system set. So right now I have it set for what would be heavier loads, loads like buckshot slugs, things like that, because I've reduced the amount of, of gas a little bit because there's so much more gas pressure, supposedly from the shotgun shells. What I have here, isn't really hot stuff. This is six shot. This is a state 12 gauge ammunition. It is uh, 12, uh, what is it, 1255 velocity, muzzle velocity. So it's not exactly hot stuff. It's low brass. Okay, I would call this middle of the road type shotgun shells. But again, I've turned the gas system down just to see how it's going to work. And then if it doesn't cycle 100%, I can switch it over and give it more gas. The shotgun has a reciprocating charging handle, which you can see that right here and it has a bolt release, which is somewhat awkwardly located right here. Most of us, myself included, would expect this to be a magazine release, and it's not. The magazine release is located right here in the front, and it's also located over here on the other side of the receiver, so the mag release is ambi. Uh, the, the, the bolt release is kind of what I, again, would expect to be an AK flapper release, so it's gonna take a little bit of getting used to. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and release the bolt by pushing my, <laughs> my magazine release. And you can see it went ahead and chambered that first round. Now it's five rounds and the gun does lock open on the last shot fired, assuming it's getting enough gas. Got my rubber dummy down range. I have my DI optics 
red dot sight all turned on and I have, I think, four magazines on me. So let's see if this shotgun will work with medium range loads, 1255 muzzle velocity on the lowest gas setting. And the first shot knocked my rubber dummy over. So now I'm just gonna shoot some old pumpkins that were out there. All right, so on the lowest gas setting, it did not lock the bolt open. Not surprising, but it did cycle all five rounds. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn it over to the setting that gives me more gas to operate the gun and see if we can get the, the gun to lock open. You can see how I put the magazines in. It's pretty much just like an AR-15. You see them, they lock in. There's no mag play whatsoever in the gun. That's kind of interesting. And then I'm gonna hit my bolt release and it chambers that round. All right, and you can also use that as a forward assist. What I found is when I'm holding the gun because it's so short, when I'm holding it up here and I hit the bolt release, that charging handle will go forward and hit my hand and it won't get around completely into battery. All right, now let's see if it'll go ahead and lock open this time now that I've given it just a little bit more gas. And sure enough, it locked open. So, see, I went to release <laughs> the magazine and almost dropped the bolt. Another interesting feature of the shotgun. So when the gun does run dry, okay, I'm gonna drop the magazine or drop the bolt home with its lever here. When the gun runs dry, even without a magazine in it, when the bolts pull to the rear, it's gonna lock open, okay? And the only way to get it to go home, pulling on the handle won't do it. You're gonna have to hit that bolt release, all right? It's actually kind of nice. It makes for fast reloads in case your gun didn't lock open. And again, some more of the Estate 12 gauge. Go ahead and hit my bolt release. Locked open, I'm gonna use the mag release on the left side of the gun. Yeah, see, it even pulling the charging handle. Doesn't work when a fresh magazine in, is in. You're gonna to have to hit that lever to chamber the round. Oops. Ah, didn't have the magazine seated. I'll leave that in there. Why not? <laughs> All right, so bolt locked open again. So I have noticed that you have to give the magazines a pretty good whack to seat them. As I had noted, there is no play in the magazine at all. No side to side movement. See, I didn't even have it locked in. I thought I hit it. Now I hit it there and it has very little play. Um, I'm imagining that's contributing something to the reliability of the feeding of the gun. I'm gonna go ahead and drop that magazine out. I'm gonna go over and find, I think I have some lighter game loads they brought out. Let's see how the shotgun works with the lighter game loads and then we'll step it up and do some buckshot. I have to set my rubber dummy back up because I knocked the darn thing over. I got Mr. Rubber Dummy all patched up. All right, so now I have a full box, 25 rounds, loaded into five round magazines that the shotgun uses. These are federal game loads, game and target loads. These are bulk pack, really low power stuff, seven and a half shot at 1200 feet per second. This is the stuff you find at Walmart. That's where I got it. So this is about as mild as you can get in terms of shotgun loads. You'll notice I still have my gas setting set over to the highest position, meaning I'm giving it as much gas as the system allows. I'm gonna go ahead and lock my magazine in. And let's see if it cycles and if it locks open. It locked open all five rounds. All right, let's see if it can continue that. Again, just more of the Federal, all right. I will say it takes some work to get those magazines to seat. I don't know if I'm doing something wrong here, or it might just be bad magazines. There we go. You know what I just discovered is it's kind of a rocking thing. You kind of push it in and rock it back a little bit. So I think it's a loose nut behind the butt plate. I'm still learning how to use this gun, guys. It's the first time I've really had it to the range other than to fire a box of shells through it. Probably helps to uh, actually read the manual first, but I pride myself on the fact that I don't have to read the manual. I'm even gonna to attempt a to disassembly here in a few minutes without reading the manual first. All right, here we go. 
five more rounds of the Federal Light Load stuff. Mr. Rubber Dummy took a dive. I got him all the way down and the gun locked open again on that lightweight Federal stuff. Let's see if I can, uh, you guys might be able to see it in frame down there. It's uh, got some pumpkins scattered around from a little bit of festivities over the holidays. So here's a close up of those magazines. And I'm guessing that locking ledge right there is what we're trying to do. So let me see if I can do this right this time. Put the nose in first. Get the bolt back, yep. Hmm. There we go. Yep, it's definitely a science. You gotta get it lined up just right. You're probably not gonna break any land speed records here doing magazine reloads. The magazines do fit very tightly and you have to get it just right when you load it. All right, let's try it one more time with five more rounds of those Federal Light Loads. And she locked open once again. So far, my only real complaint is I'm struggling with these magazine reloads. Okay, got that one. And she locked open once again. These are the lightest loads I brought out today, so. And yeah, we have it set on the high gas setting. All right, one failure to lock back on those light loads. That's pretty impressive. Aside from the fact I'm struggling just a little bit to uh, get these magazines to seat, and that one worked just fine. It's kind of a, one of those deals where you kind of have to stick it in and rock it forward and back as you go in. It's not like a straight shot. I think that's what I figured out. All right, well, that does it for the light stuff. Actually, that's pretty impressive. You'll. If you shoot 12 gauge shotgun semi-automatics that are gas powered, gas driven with piston systems, you'll find that a lot of them are very finicky. The Sega 12 gauge, for example, I don't even own one. I hate that shotgun. There's entire discussion forums out there dedicated to how to, to fluff and buff and get your Sega 12 gauge working with every field load to a buckshot or slug load. And it's that, just, just not for me. For many years, the only shotgun I would ever use, I've ever really owned, well, there were two at 870 that I had since I was in high school, and a Benelli Super 90, which is inertia-driven, and it would feed most everything. Um, the Vepper 12 impressed me because I couldn't believe it will shoot most of the light stuff, not 100%, but 95% of the time. And this is the only the second 12-gauge shotgun that I found with an adjustable gas system. You can hear the piston in there. That's the piston flopping around. This is the only the uh, second semi-automatic shotgun I found that seems to, at least so far, reliably cycle the lighter stuff. Now I can't guarantee they'll all do this. You know, all shotguns can be a little bit different. Um, so if you do buy one of these and it doesn't cycle the light loads, don't come yelling at me. Um, this one's doing it. One thing I have noticed about the five round magazines for the shotgun is that they can be a little bit ammo specific. So I have some, I think these are Remington. No, these are S&B, S&B Buckshot. And it's a two and three quarter inch load, but it's just a few thousandths of an inch too long to work in the magazine. So if I go to try to push another round in there, you'll see that the, the round sticks in the magazine. It's just ever so slightly too long. I found a couple of loads that are that way and it's not just in that one magazine there's that magazine I'll, I'll grab another one and show you it it does the same thing i i can't get it to go down so um you will have to if you're gonna go buy shotgun shells take one of your magazines with you and make sure that what you're buying especially if you're buying in bulk is going to work with the gun now here's a slug this is a, a remington slug and these fit and work just fine in the magazine and all the target loads, the six shot, seven and a half, eight shot, all seem to work just fine. Just every once in a while, I'll run into a buckshot load or even some slug loads I tried at the shop when I was uh, bringing uh, ammo out. I, I just assumed buckshot would all work and the buckshot I brought doesn't. Uh, but 
the slugs, some of them were a little bit too long as well, but these uh, Remington slugs work pretty darn good in the magazines, they feed anyway. I've loaded up five rounds of the Remington slugs. These are gonna be some bruisers. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the gas system back down. I don't think I'm gonna need a full charge of gas. It should cycle these hot loads really well. Have Mr. Rubber Dummy a little bit further down range this time. Again, five rounds of the slugs. Notice how I get my shirt caught in the magazine. <laughs> well, I don't know if you can see that. Not my shirt, my jacket. I'm having problems with that. All right, let's get the magazine rock and locked. There we go. Go ahead and chamber that first round. We do have it on the low gas setting. And let's see how Mr. Rubber Dummy handles five rounds of slugs. Let's see if my DI optical red dot sight's even on. I haven't really sighted it in truly. I was just kind of moving it around, kind of getting the shot pattern kind of close to center. Ooh, hit Rubber Dummy in the neck. So I'm gonna have to aim, I think that was center of mass. I'm gonna have to aim just a little bit low. And we did have one failure to feed. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it some more gas and it should hopefully finish out the magazine. Looks like it just didn't have quite enough uh, forward momentum to pick up that next round. Ah, dead trigger. Didn't fully cycle. I'm gonna go ahead and clear that round out of there put it back in the magazine. Again, I have turned the gas system up, giving it more gas. Looks like we have three rounds left in the magazine. All right, now let's see if we get function. Huh. Didn't lock open, but it fired them out. So the gas setting did help. All right, so I haven't uh, lubricated this thing at all, and you can probably tell it's pretty much dry in there, but we're gonna keep shooting it anyway just to see how she does. But um, yep, for whatever reason, I need to turn that gas setting up, setting up on the slugs, but it gave me function once again. Before I get to the Winchester 8 shot with the muzzle velocity of 1255, it's probably a good time to point out that uh, a couple of things. First of all, it has a chrome-lined barrel, so you can shoot steel shot through it. It is an open bore. There is no there is no choke on it, but it does have standard Sega 12 gauge threads here externally, so external chokes will work for this shotgun. Also, if you're a left-handed shooter, you're either going to become a right-handed shooter um, because there's no provisions to make it eject out the other side of the receiver and your selector lever for safe and fire is right here, which if you're a right-handed shooter, it's fairly easy to get to. But if you're a left-handed shooter, you're kind of reaching around and trying to find it and rotate it. Not impossible, but you definitely don't want your face right there next to that ejection port, at least I wouldn't. So it seems to be more or less a right-handed shooter's gun all right, so having covered off on all that, here are some, I think these are eight shot, Winchester game loads, 1255 muzzle velocity. I do have my gas setting. So I have it with the most gas I can give the gun. All right, now let's see how Mr. Rubber Dummy takes this. I was waiting for him to kind of rock forward so I didn't have to go back over and set him up. Locked open just fine. I'm using this magazine release button right there. Grab another magazine out. Just kind of stick it in. Rock it back and forth. That locks it in. Hit your release. Huh, I felt the bolt kind of hang up there. Didn't, it, it kind of hung there and went closed. I don't think it got a full stroke. Again, these are very light game loads. All right, Winchester light game loads, eight shot.
However, it did lock open that time. Could have just been a bad round. All right, I'm using the left side magazine release there. And one more magazine of the Winchester light game loads. There we go. I think some of these magazines might be perhaps a little bit tighter fitting than the other ones because the other ones popped right in. This one was just a little bit tighter fitting. And the rubber dummy fell over. Why didn't you guys say something? All right, I'm just gonna shoot pumpkins. All right, let's find that round that didn't go off. Kind of hung up. So you can look and see how the, the nose of the bullet right there is kind of damaged. Could have been bit that way in the box or could have happened during feeding. I suspect that's what caused it to kind of hang up before it went closed. See if I can get that sucker in the chamber. Put my hand in the way of the bolt charging handle again. And it fired fine and uh, locked open. So that could have been just a defect in that particular cartridge. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look on the inside of the shotgun. Guys, I've never taken this thing apart before. I literally just took it out of the box. I got it in yesterday. Uh, fired a few rounds out of it just to see how it worked. I haven't lubricated it or anything, so it's still bone dry from the, the factory. I don't necessarily recommend doing that, but I just like to see how things work out of the box. If I got to lube it, well, I'll find out by shooting it. Uh, again, I don't recommend you do that. It's just one of the things I do in my testing protocols because I like to abuse things. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and drop the magazine out of the... The shotgun, I'm gonna hit the release, take the magazine out. Bolt, as I mentioned, automatically locks to the rear. This is your bolt release, right there. So if you wanna lock your bolt to the rear, just simply pull the charging handle to the rear, and even without an empty magazine, it's gonna go ahead and lock back, allowing you to see that the chamber is empty. I'm gonna go ahead and put the bolt home, assuming that I will need to do that to get the gun apart. Guess I can put it on safe too, there's the safety lever. I'm going to start by driving this rear pin out. Looks like it goes through this way. So you can see how that rear pin pops out. Is it captive? Looks like it might be a captive pin. And at that point, whoa! <laughs> it just came apart. Alrighty then, interesting parts and pieces. I hope I can get this back together. So, this is what it looks like on the inside. This, I'm guessing, rides down here. <laughs> oh boy, did I potentially just screw up. Ah, I know how this goes. This rides in those rails, that spring goes right there. There we go. All right, so that's what it looks like normally. You can see how the spring mechanism works. I had never seen it on the inside before until I had done that, and it just kind of spontaneously uh, sprung itself apart when I took that top cover off. All right, so that would appear to be, let's see, is that a striker assembly? May well be. I'm learning with you guys right now. I'm gonna put it on fire, pull the trigger, Sure enough, guys, it's a striker assembly. There is no hammer. It's uh, it's using this thing as the striker, okay? You can see down here inside the sear block. When I pull the trigger, you can see how that little sear block's going up and down. That's what releases the striker. All right, so it looks like the striker spring and this spring are your two recoil springs. And pull the bolt to the rear. Guess it just comes oh all right you know what you have to take out your your charging handle so i'm just gonna pull on that and that pops right out now i should be able to slide my bolt let's make sure nothing flies apart out the rear so there's your bolt carrier and bolt assembly it's a little firing pin i don't see where the retaining pin is looks like it might be a roll pin holding it all together Yeah, it looks like there's a little tiny roll pin right here that's perhaps holding it all together. I don't see an easy way to get the firing pin out. But you should be able to uh, to clean it regardless there. But if you needed to, you could punch that little roll pin out, I guess, and get that part out. All right, so let's take a look on the other end. So you should be able to clean the shotgun fairly easily. 
since you can see pretty much right down the barrel from the, uh, the breech end, taking the gas piston apart. I've done this already. You just turn the, turn the, uh, the gas selector, just push in on this little spring, turn it until you can wiggle the plug out, and then you can see the different positions on the plug. And I believe the gas piston, yep, will just pop right out, and there's your gas piston. All right, that sucker's still hot. So I'm guessing that's about all you have to do. There's a couple more pins here. Uh, you could take out, it looks like the trigger pack. Actually, there's that little bolt stop I was talking about. See right there when I'm pushing on the bolt release lever? See it moving up and down? So uh, I, it looks like I could take off this top housing with another pin, and I could probably take the trigger mechanism out with this pin here, but I'm not gonna do that. I think for basic field maintenance, this is all that's required. I'm gonna go ahead and run over to the truck and grab some, uh, grab a rag and some lubricant and then clean this thing up a little bit while I have it apart and then we'll put it back together and see if I can accomplish that. All right, so I've got it all wiped down. It was surprisingly clean on the inside given the fact I think I've put a couple hundred rounds through it so far. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and use my Battle Born Grease. I showed you this guys, uh, I showed this stuff to you guys before. Uh, I use this in the A-Rex 1000 round test. I'm becoming more and more impressed with it. I still clean with CLP. This is just a straight up lubricant. Um, and it's not truly a grease, it's a synthetic that's just gelled. So this may be the longest part of the video as I try to get this thing put back together. I'm gonna do the easy one first. I'm gonna drop the gas piston in and, it, and it's not perfectly round, it's offset. So I'm gonna have to see how that hole is. So it goes down like this into tube Let's see if we can get it to bingo I think I got it right the first time just dropped right in there all right and I take my gas plug I set it on the end there push the button I'm gonna leave it on the high setting because the gun seems to work flawlessly there all right got the gas piston me mechanism back together now this is where it's going to get a little bit challenging because again I don't read manuals all right so I'm gonna put the bolt carrier assembly in I'll lose my 556 around there Looks like it just rides on aluminum receiver rails right here. That should just slide forward. You can see the hole right here for the charging handle, which you can put in on either the left or right hand side of the gun. Now, to get the bolt to go home, you have to hit the, the little flapper release, right? So the bolt can go home. If you don't, it'll hang up on that little mechanism. It locks open automatically, right? So hit the flapper and then you can push your bolt carrier assembly home. Almost sounds like I know what I'm doing. I have noticed that the polymer is very easy to flex. Same with the upper receiver. It's a very lightweight polymer. All right, um, put the recoil spring in. This is where I think it's gonna get a little bit challenging. I'm gonna go ahead and put my striker assembly in. See if I can remember how I did this. Uh, Uh, I'm not the smartest guy on the planet. This lines up with the same receiver rails as the bolt and carrier. All right, I'm gonna push that forward. I'm gonna pull the trigger and see if I can get that striker to release and go forward. It automatically wants to come back. It seems like it's gonna stay in that position because we're gonna have to overcome the spring pressure here to get this stock on. All right, looks like Looks like there's a little place for it, for that this top spring to rest in the top up there. So I'm gonna have to try to get that up there. Set that down, it just unlocked. Ugh. Push it forward. Of course, my pen went across while I was doing all this. So now I gotta get that pen out. I'm gonna use my charging handle. All right, now I should be able to slide that forward. And hopefully I can get that pin. Looks like it should line up. There we go. All right, got the pin in. Now I should be able to put in the charging handle even though I didn't do it already. It's not like other guns. I can put it in on this side just by simply pushing it in. It just has a detent inside the carrier itself. I'm gonna go ahead and put it on the left-hand side. I kind of like it over there. 
just pops right in, locks in place. You can pull it out just by pulling on it hard enough. And then of course, put it on the other side just by locking it in. And then you can run the gun. As you can see, it gets in the way of my red dot sight there. But so there's nothing really holding that in place except that little spring detent, but it does seem to be a very stiff detent. I don't think you're gonna lose it in the field. All right, well, it does look like I managed to disassemble and reassemble the, uh, the Puma without have, having read the uh, instruction manual. Now let, the real test is to see if the thing will actually shoot. <laughs> so let's shoot it and see if I got it back together right. Guys, I'm gonna own this. This is unedited, okay? This is the first time I'm attempting to fire it after reassembling it, but it looks like the gun can really only go together, together one way. Now, I know a lot of you guys may criticize me for the fact that I'm uh, not cleaning the gun before I shoot it, and uh, I'm not reading the instruction manual before I'm making videos. Look guys, I'm not a reviewer. I don't see myself as a gear and firearms reviewer. I'm just a shooter and a collector. I bring these guns out to the range to shoot them and enjoy them. I just bring a camera along so you guys can follow along. I don't recommend you buy or sell guns based upon the things that I do or the things that you may see here on the channel. I'm just showing you my experiences. Sure, I have opinions, I like to share them, but don't take my, my word as the gospel on anything, okay guys? I just want you guys to come and hang out with me at the range. All right, with that being said, let's see if I did everything correctly in putting the shotgun back together. Check my gas settings. I wanna make sure that I have it on the high setting. And we are shooting, I believe these are the, the estate loads. So these are the estate, uh, I believe these are eight shot. I'll have to double check, but again, we're, we're out of the hot stuff. So this is either moderate or light. I think this is the moderate stuff. Make sure we got it on fire. Lo and behold, I man managed to do it. I don't know if that makes me a firearms expert or not. I'm really not. I know enough about firearms just to be dangerous. I own a lot, I shoot a lot, but I don't claim to be a professional. But I love pulling the trigger. And locked open again. That was our second magazine. I think you got two more. Definitely starting to get that uh, magazine reload figured out. It does take a little bit of practice. Locked open again. I keep wanting to reach for the bolt release to drop the magazine out. And there we go. All right. That's pretty darn cool. Let's uh, go sit down, take a look at it a little bit more, and I'll give you some final thoughts. Well, guys, some final thoughts on the Puma 12 gauge shotgun. I've been pretty impressed with the function of the shotgun. This is my first range session. Fired a couple hundred rounds this afternoon of various stuff. I was really surprised to find that it cycled the light stuff. Now, if you get one and it doesn't cycle the super light loads like this one did this afternoon, don't blame me. I can't guarantee that they're all gonna cycle like this one, but I was totally blown away by just how much this little guy could actually cycle. Uh, I like it because it's probably as close as I'll ever get to a QBZ-95, which is a Chinese military service rifle. Uh, it looks pretty much just like it. And uh, that to me intrigues me and makes me wanna shoot it more, although I'm not a real big shotgun guy. Uh, some of the Positive qualities is the fact that the guns seem to cycle everything. Again, I can't guarantee they all will, but uh, I was certainly blown away by the fact that this one pretty much fed everything I, I put in it. Uh, I'm gonna leave on video all the malfunctions I had. I think I had one with the slugs, and that was just because it was under gas. When I turned the gas up to its highest setting, it cycled, then we had that one misfeed. Um, with, with the game load and it looked like the tip of the shell was damaged. I don't know if it was damaged in the box or if it damaged it in the feeding cycle of the shotgun, but those were the only two malfunctions that we had this afternoon with this 12 gauge semi-automatic. So it's, uh, it seems to be a pretty good operating little gun. It has its two gas port settings. I wound up using them both, but I think it's safe to say just to go ahead and leave it on the high gas cycle. Um, I did notice that some shotgun shells, like in my case, buckshot and some slugs, may not fit into the five round steel magazines. And here are those magazines. So uh, you will wanna take your magazine to your local gun shop and test to make sure that uh, they're gonna fit because there seems to be just like maybe a few thousandths of an inch, just ever so slightly, they won't, uh, they won't fit. And it seems to be those shells where they roll the end over to hold in like a cup on the end for, for buckshot or uh, for a slug. All the bird shot, 
loaded into the magazines just fine. Not just bird shot, but six shot, BB shot, stuff like that that I fired out of it. So the function certainly seems to be solid. Uh, the gun's nice, short, and handy. I think it'd be an ideal platform for an SBS or a short barreled shotgun. If you cut it off right here and put the threads back, which again, it uses standard Sega 12 gauge external chokes, uh, that would be for a very short, handy weapon. But even with its 18 inch barrel, that's still a pretty short, darn little shotgun. Uh, I will say that unless there's some other shotgun out there on the market that's a bullpup semi-automatic 12 gauge, I think this is the only game in town right now. I know there are other companies working on it, but there might be some obscure shotgun out there I haven't seen yet, um, or maybe I'm just forgetting the obvious, but right now I think this is about your only option if you want a bullpup semi-automatic 12 gauge. There's uh, pump action guns like the DP-12, which is a double barrel shotgun that feeds from a traditional tube. We have the KSG, of course, which feeds from two tubes. This one doesn't feed from tubes, it feeds from five round magazines. Hopefully a company like SGM will jump in the game and give us some eight round or 10 round magazines. I think eight rounds would be ideal at a MSRP of $999. Um, you know, it's, it's not inexpensive, but it just seems to be the way things are going these days, guys. Guns are getting more expensive. The economy sucks and uh, guns are just expensive. But $999, is it worth it? That's subjective. To me it is because I like the QBZ95. I've always wanted one. And this little shotgun kind of scratches that itch for me. I will also say that the DI Optical red dot sight seems to work really, really good. I mean, I've, I've only had it out a couple of times. I put it on the shotgun because I wanted to beat it up a little bit. Uh, it's again, 279 bucks. It's a South Korean made red dot sight, 30 millimeter body. Um, it seems to be a good option for those of you that want to you know, take a look at something, you don't want to spend $800 on an aim point. They have a number of different models available. They have little tiny reflex sights for pistols all the way up to this 30 millimeter tube. I have a couple more of these sights that I'm playing with, which I'll show you in future videos. One last thing I want to talk about is the ergonomics of this thing and what I think of them. Um, for right-handed shooters, you're going to be great. The ejection port is over here, cannot be moved to the other side. Charging handle can be moved to the other side, but if you're a left-handed shooter, you're going to have that thing kicking out big hunks of plastic and brass in your face. We'll give this thing to Sam and let him shoot it since he's a lefty and see what he says. You do have ambi release uh, on the magazine. You can release it from either side of the shotgun, and again, you can move the charging handle over to the other side. I think that the selector lever is in kind of an awkward position. It's not marked safe or fire. It's just a zero and a one. There's no red or white to indicate safe or fire. You're just gonna have to figure out that one means fire and zero means safe. Um, other than that, I think that's, oh, well, of course, then the obvious. I really think that uh, this is a magazine release because of, you know, you think Chinese, you think AKs, I'm an AK operator type of guy, and I keep wanting to reach for this button to release the magazine, and what I'm doing is dropping the bolt. The magazine releases up here, so those are the, really the only ergonomic dings I can give the shotgun. So, that's my initial thoughts on this little red dot sight from DI Optical, and on the uh, new Puma 12 gauge shotgun from DDI. I will be shooting the shotgun quite a bit more in the future, and I'll bring you guys along, and I hope you enjoy you know, seeing these new products. I certainly enjoy, it feels like I, you know, I'm a kid in a candy store when I get a new box in the mail at Copper, and uh, you know, I get to open up the boxes and my business partner gets mad at me because every new weapon we get in, I wanna take one and use it as a store demo to come out and, and shoot videos with just because I'm a gun collector and, and, and he's um, the business brains. <laughs> I just like shooting them. Um, anyway, so I hope you enjoyed the video, guys. Of course, if you have any questions, please ask those questions down below. I do try to stick around for the first couple of days after I post my videos live to answer the questions you guys may have. Also, please swing by and check out Copper Custom. That's how you can best support the Military Arms Channel, guys. I always get offers of donations and, and things like that, people wanting to send in money or send in things. And, and honestly, please just swing by and shop at Copper. That's the best way to support us here. And, uh, and in return, you get a high-quality product. Um, also, if you haven't already, please check out Fold30.com. That's Fold30.com. We've taken all the web's best firearms content creators and brought them under one gun-friendly roof, and that is Fold30.com. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for all those years of support, and I'll talk to you guys soon.